Welcome to Football Manager 2021! Um, I'm recording this well in advance for when the beta does drop. Because, viewers, this method, I need to explain in detail how this method works. Because today, viewers, I'm going to help you with Football Manager 2021. I'm going to help you and explain a method that I have been using for years and years called the Youth to Gold. What is the Youth to Gold? Well, I'll explain it a little bit more in the future. But basically, it is a way, a method of playing Football Manager that has brought me great success and also earned me a lot of money in the game. I'll show you an example. A lot of you may know exactly what this save game file is. It is my Youth to Gold series from FM20. And I'm just going to show you a few things. So we ended the, the actual career of well, this series, by the way, winning the Champions League. So as you can see here, past winners, we won it in 2027-28, just in nine seasons. Now, of course, with bigger teams, you can do that uh, a lot quicker. But Strasbourg, they were not a big team by far. Uh, they were in the, the, the lower ends of the French League. And we built this side up to what it was. Competitions-wise before that, in League 1, we actually won the league four seasons in a row, finishing runners-up twice before that uh, to Paris Saint-Germain. So we eventually overthrown Paris Saint-Germain and then we just had to win the Champions League. We were very unlucky as well. I played all of this series live on stream. A lot of people will agree. But, viewers, but the finances, look how much money we have in the bank compared to just four years ago where we had just £10 million in the bank. That is what the Youth to Gold does. At the start, you may struggle. It might be a bit of a grind, but eventually, viewers, eventually you will reap the benefits of a lot of money. I had an ending transfer budget of 209 million, and I promise you, I had no intention of spending any of it. That is because I already had three squads worth of unbelievable players who could have easily slotted into my first team that I have built year after year after year through the Youth to Gold method. Now, I have explained what the Youth to Gold can bring you in reward-wise, and I know you're all intrigued now, else you would have probably have clicked off and gone and watched a Zealand video instead. Can't blame you. The guy's great. The Youth to Gold is a method that I implemented into the series to make sure I stuck to it strictly, and I abided by it uh, for, really, the concept of the series, but so I could prove to everyone that it works. And you can do that too, or you can be a little bit more relaxed on it. It's totally down to you. But basically, the rules that I made myself do is only allowed to sign teenagers and never use players above the age of 30. Now, it got to the point where I don't think I actually used anyone above the age of 26. But that is because that is what the Youth to Gold brings. You have so many great wonder kids in the game, in your squad, that you just don't really need anyone who is above the age of 25, 26 years old. And the reason why, viewers, the reason why you do that is monetary value of a player. So we head back to the Youth to Gold series, and this is the squad that we ended up winning the Champions League with. If we take a look at the age, the oldest player we have in the squad is 26, and that is Sebastiano Esposito, one of the best wonder kids on the game in FM20. We started, we bought him very early on in his career, and we just kept him because of how good he was. We did actually try selling him at one point uh, for a lot of money. He refused to go because he loved the club, which is... Fair enough. I mean, it was annoying because I wanted the money. But we ended up keeping him, and he did end up being part of our title-winning side. But if we have a look at his, I mean, his value here, £62 million at the age of 26. Some of these players, viewers, who are around about the 19 years of age that we are still playing are absolutely, unbelievably high-valued. I mean, this guy here, Kenny Van Gogh, 23 years of age. 87 million. Jackson Gab, one of the best strikers in the world, 87 million. Look how good he actually is. Now, we actually spent quite a lot of money on this guy. He is kind of against the mold, but we knew he was going to be good, so we took the risk and spent the money. But that was when we had the money. Early on in the career, viewers, we didn't have the money, so we had to be very acute with our signings. So let's dive a little bit more into this method and kind of give you a bit of detail on the process of it. Kind of a step by step. Step number one, the early years. In the early years, you're going to have to try and sacrifice some players. 
What I mean by that is you may have in your team, you might start a team and you have one of your best players is 29 years of age and he is probably your highest value player. What you'd probably normally do is you try and keep that player as much as you possibly could so that other players, other teams don't manage to pick him up. You don't lose your best player uh, and you try and build a, t a team around him. I would suggest not do that because of the youth to gold system. See, the thing is, once he turns 30 years of age, his value is going to start decreasing. And the older he gets, the worse he is going to be and his value is just going to keep decreasing and you kind of lost the monetary value of that player. Whereas if you sold him in season number one, for instance, if he was uh, 29 years of age and he's 40 million quid, that's 40 million pound that you could spend on maybe 10 wonder kids in the game that in three years time would all be better than the first player that you sold for 40 million pound. And say out of those 10 players, four of them, are also worth now £40 million, four plus, four times four, that's £160 million in just four years, rather than £40 million, which in that four years, is going to be worth nothing. Now, I know that kind of doesn't make much sense and maybe a little bit confusing, but what, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is that in my first few seasons at Strasbourg, I looked at the players who were my first team players and I thought, are they really going to get to the point where they're good enough to be a title winning player? And the answer was no. So as soon as I knew that, and as soon as they had a little bit of interest from other clubs, I looked to sell them. So, I mean, I'm not getting much money here, but 3 million plus 2 million plus 1 million all of that adds up and I can start spending a little bit more. £18 million here. And if you look at the players I managed to bring in this season, I mean, this is the second season here. I managed to bring in Esposito on a loan to buy deal, which we ended up activating. Loan market, by the way, used the loan market because Troy Parrott, the season that he joined us, was unbelievable. We had Phil Foden for two seasons at the very start of the league campaign unbelievable and look at all of these players that I managed to buy every single one less than a million pound all the way down to here and every single one played some part in my first team lineup eventually we got Ike Nori in we managed to get this guy in who was absolutely incredible for us for a long period of time he's now at Chelsea we ended up selling him for 55 million pound and we signed him first season for 70k I know that's kind of like random and you're going to have to have a really good judge of potential uh, and have a look at these attributes. But there's plenty of ways that you can tell whether a player is going to be good or not, like personality, like determination and whether they actually look quite good and whether your scouts say that they have the potential to be great. But it also relies on a bit of logic here. Me selling some of my first team players for just £3 million, just £1 million, it could have detrimental effects in the first season. But three seasons down the line, they're in my first team lineup and I'm selling them for £55 million. It's hard to argue against that. Another example here is this man, Ochoa. Now this guy ended up being my first team deep line playmaker for... I don't know how many years and we signed him in the in the first season after the first season 400k and we played him every single time we could and the lowest amount of games he played was 26 but look how high his average rating is all all the time it's sevens of the very first season when he joined he came in and he was already good enough to be a first team player and we we took a gamble on him and now he's worth 75 million pound at the age of just 25 but we bought him for 400k. So I kind of alluded to the second tip that I wanted to uh, bring across to you there. And that is to grow your players. The best way to grow players is give them first team football. So if you do think you have a player who is younger and has better potential than one of your first team players. But he's nowhere near as good. Give that guy game time. Because if he does reach this guy's potential ability. Well, if he does reach this guy's current ability. He can far and away exceed it. Because his potential is far greater. And you'll just end up having a much better player. Very earlier on in your career. Rather than having to wait for him to develop in the reserves. Or out on loan. The third tip that I have for you here. Is looking for players simply for profit. Now this comes a little bit later on from the beginning because at the beginning you want to spend every little penny that you have with these lower end of the league clubs with not a lot of money you want to spend every bit of penny that you have on buying players who are going to improve your first team 
that are young. However, when you get to a point where you've established a good 11, maybe second or third season in, that's when you kind of want to have a look around and see if you can flip some players for some profit. Kind of like FIFA Ultimate Team style. And that is exactly what I did in my third season, as you can see here, 2021-2022 season. I found a couple of players who really didn't really cost me much, and I ended up selling in for a lot of money. And we have a look at this guy. We got him from Egypt. Always have a look at clubs from Egypt and the, the African countries because they're always very cheap. Load them up at the start of the game too. Tarek Marai now finds himself at Porto for £17 million. He's not that good, let's be honest. But we managed to pick him up in his first couple of seasons for 300k. It was a gamble. We never played him. We just simply loaned him out. So we weren't paying any of his wages. And we sold him back to the same club for 7 million. Easy profit. We also found two really good free transfers in this season who had been around and ended up never signing a new deal. We signed them on free transfers, loaned them out, actually used them a couple of times. Sold him on for 20 million. So the next tip that I have for you, once you have started establishing your first team lineup, is to start prioritising continental competitions above league cups. Now you might be thinking, but I kind of want to bring success to my club. You're saying I brought success to the club. Why are you saying that I shouldn't be trying to win cups? If you win a cup, fantastic. But there's not a lot of money in cups especially in the league, even the FA Cup in the Premier League, you hardly get any money for. But if you finish in fourth place in the Premier League and you get Champions League qualification, you pick up roughly about £80 million before you've even entered the competition properly and managed to get to the latter stages. So just making the group stage, you're probably giving your club about £80 million without even having to do much, just qualifying through the league campaign, finishing in fourth place. That is why I always suggest prioritising these continental competitions above winning those crappy cups which no one really cares about unless... I mean, I don't really care even if I do win one now. The next tip that I have for you is to make the big decisions with your youngsters. There might be a certain time where these players do not want to stay at your club anymore because there are bigger fish in the pond trying to steal them from you and you may think this is a bit of a disaster i've bought this youngster i've built him up to what he is now and now one of the big clubs the manchester cities the paris saint germain are coming in and trying to steal my player this is where you need to make a big decision is it worth keeping that player and letting him run out the contract and never making a profit on him or is it worth cashing in on him and using that money to buy three or four other players who you can then build to be even better than what they were. And again, I have an example for you. In the 2024-25 season, I signed Nicolas Armini right at the beginning for £1 million and he wanted to leave to Manchester City. We sold him for £105 million, leaving us with over £104 million profit in a very short space of time of about four or five seasons. He is now at Manchester City, transfer listed for £58 million. And is he good? Yes. Is he better than this guy? I'm going to say no. I don't think he's better than this guy. His passing might be better, but overall I think this guy is a much better all-round player. He is just 20 years of age, so he still has a lot of time to grow. And I managed to pick this guy up the very same season that I sold Nicolas Imini for 675 k and now he's just as good, if not better. And the reason why I was very happy to sell Nicolas Armini was because at the time as well, I had just brought in a new player uh, into the first team lineup who I'd signed a few years before. And I took a gamble on him, this guy here, £15 million. And he was just as good as Armini when we sold him, already good enough to be in the first team. And now he's developed into probably the best centre-back on the game. And he's just 23 years of age. So I already had a player ready and available to jump in Nicolas Armini's boots and fill the void we're selling him. So we made a huge profit. We signed uh, a replacement for a few years time, but we already had a ready-made replacement in our youth side, banging on the door saying, I want an opportunity. We gave that guy an opportunity and he is easily the best centre-back that we have had.
I could give you more and more examples, but it all relies on the same kind of thing. It's down to yourself to make that decision whether the player is good enough to keep or whether you are, you, if, if, you, if losing him will mean that you'll lose your job or your opportunity to get into Europe, then you need to make that big decision. But if you're doing the youth to go correctly, you probably already have a replacement ready and you need to kind of think about this in the long term. There's no short term thinking with the youth to go project. Think of it as a project every time. Do I have at least two players ready for that position? If I have someone who's going to swoop in or I have a massive injury, do I have another player ready? If not, you should be building enough money to think, I'm going to have a look around in the world market and scout someone who is cheap enough for me to bring in and can be that guy who I can build and grow into his replacement. Always have a second and a third team. That is the best thing to do in the Youth to Gold after a few years when you're, lat when you're in the latter stages of the Youth to Gold. Because at this point, you should be near enough nearly win the league. You should be near enough in the Champions League. You should be bringing in enough money to buy these replacements and still building your side uh, as, as, and, and as you grow into being that title winning team. My final tip for you today though is to work your tactic. Now what I mean by work your tactic is at a certain point you should kind of find a tactic which suits your gameplay the best, suits the players that you have and if it's working and you're beating teams and it's bringing you success, don't change that tactic too much. Why not instead train the players that you are bringing in to suit that tactic train or buy players, in fact, who suit the roles even better. That's the best way to do it. In the very early stages of this Youth to Gold series, we played around with a couple of tactics uh, which were much more defensively while we were trying to improve our team and get higher in the league. And it worked. We managed to get into Europe quite early on, but then we kind of fell off in the second and third, uh, in second and third season when we sold all our best players and began the rebuild. And that is what it is. It's kind of like the basketball situation in the NBA. Teams go through re rebuilding years where they get rid of all of their uh, expensive, high expensive, aging players and they start drafting in new players. Think of it, think of your youth to go series like that. Start selling these players and bringing in the youth. And it might be detrimental to your league position at the start, but after a couple of seasons, you will definitely see an increase in, in success. And that is what we did. When we started building a, a very good attacking team, we started finding an attacking formation. And this tactic, the Phantom Menace, was easily the best tactic that I looked at throughout the whole of FM20, made by Ryan Cassidy. And we will have some Ryan Cassidy tactics here on the channel. You guys... You might even use this tactic because it was that popular for our FM20. When we managed to fall upon this tactic and realize how good it was, we just started buying players who suited it. And as you can see here, okay, the two strikers, they might not suit it that much, but they were still scoring goals. But we had wingers who fit the who fit the bill. We had a deep line playmaker who was probably the deep, best deep line playmaker in the game. We had this Egyptian as well. We sold the other Egyptian. We also bought this guy in. I think from the same club. No, it wasn't from the same club. But we bought him for 230k. And look how good he is now. One of the world's best centre midfielders. Or centre attacking midfielders. And he fits the role of an attacking midfielder absolutely perfectly. Train your players in these positions. Give them the best chance to be the best player in these roles. And there we have it. That's all I have for you today for this Youth to Gold explanation. I hope this helps. I hope you like the concept if you want to do a Youth to Gold, let me know down in the comments. I will be doing one myself on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash Omega Loop Gaming. That is where the Youth to Gold will be held this season on Football Manager. I haven't picked a team yet, but by the time you see the stream, you'll see who it is. Uh, and hopefully we can bring as much success to that team as we did with our Strasbourg side. So let me know down in the comments if you're going to do a Youth to Gold, whether you're going to be a little bit more relaxed with the rules, whether you're going to be really strict and re resist from signing anyone who is not a teenager and, and using anyone who is 30 years plus. Because I'm telling you right now, if you do it correctly, you'll end up with a lot of success in Football Manager and you will enjoy doing it as well. There is nothing better in Football Manager than seeing all of your youngsters grow into the world's best players and you have the world's best teams offering you millions and millions and millions of pounds to sign them and you think, 
I've got enough money in the bank that I can reject this because that has literally happened. We had a we had a player for 150 million pound and we rejected it because we didn't need the money. So I hope this video helps. Please smash the like button if you can. That'll be fantastic. Click the subscribe because we're going to be doing plenty more hints and tips and players, spotlights, tactic videos on the Omega Loot Gaming channel throughout FM21. I'm mega excited to get this going and I hope you are too. So come along and join the journey. I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.